MTD CNC, bringing you the latest engineering news via video media. Mark, we've got the RoboJob automation system here, which is wired up to one of your Mazak machines. Where do you see the future for this product? Okay, uh, the machine we have here is a Crichton um, Nexus 250 MS. Uh, it's a machine with a 10 inch chuck, a capacity of around about 380 maximum turning diameter, and an 80 millimeter through bar feed capacity. It has a second spindle with a 6 inch chuck up to 6,000 RPM. Uh, it's just able to complete operations in, in one step first operation and second operation. With the addition of the automation though, this is really exciting in terms of lowering manufacturing costs. If you look at the typical way in which an operator is used for a CNC machine, 30% uh, of his time is spent doing the creative task, programming, setup, and the initial part program prove out. But then the other 70% of his time is spent really doing um, repetitive tasks like loading the machine. So the use of the automation really gives us the ability to free up the operator to do more creative tasks and therefore the loading of the machine can be then done by the robot. So that's 70% of time you're looking to utilise the operator to do other jobs? Yes. If you look at CNC tariff now, it's fairly static. So a way in which we can get more competitive is to, is to lower the, um, uh, the manufacturing cost and we can free up skilled operators to do more creative tasks than other machines whilst the machine is then being loaded by the robot. The solution looks quite simple and I can see the benefit to that. What about the product that's actually driving it, so the RoboJob itself? Okay. This is the RoboJob Turn Assist 250 product and it's designed around a machine with a 250 millimeter size capacity. It's very flexible in its configuration and the system that we're showing here today includes a 20 kilogram FANUC robot. So it can pick up some very heavy work pieces, but it can be specified with a robot up to 70 kilos. Looking at this though, Mark, is, is there a health and safety hazard with the fact you've only got uh, guarding at the, at the left and to the back near the machine? No, Paul, this is fully CE, CE compliant. So it operates with a six safety scanner, which is scanning the, the perimeter area. So you'll see here, we've got two lines. We've got a yellow zone and a red zone. So while I'm outside of the yellow zone, the machine uh, and the robot operate at full speed. If I step inside of the yellow zone, the robot will slow down to 25%. If I step inside of the red zone, uh, the robot will stop and the machine will carry on working, providing that the machine door stopped. If I step in while well, both the machine door and the robot are, uh, 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 the machine doors open and the robot's working, then both systems will stop. So as long, if you're in the red, as long as the machine's running, you're not going to affect your production? No, you're not. That, that's correct. The other great factor about this system is the access to the machine. So I haven't got to open up any guardings to get access when I want to do other operations on the machines or in, in initial setup of the machine. And I would also look at it and say, if I didn't want for any reason not to use the robotics or the automation, I could use the machine and hand load it anyway. Not that I would, but I could. But well, that's correct, and, and that is the, the beauty of this system that we see here today. Now, what about the actual cap or the capacity of the loader here? What's, what's the maximum size or weight of component we can use on the Rojo, robo job? Well, it, it is flexible. The system we see here includes a, a robot with a 20 kilo pay payload. But again, if the customer has a different requirement, that can go up and down the scale with a larger or smaller robot. So although we're seeing this here on the Nexus 250, it could be another Mazak machine? Yes, we could go up or down the size on our machines. We could have a machine for a 100 or a 300 size machine equally, yes. Now automation's great, but what about if I set the machine and let's say I walk away and the first part's scrap, doesn't that then mean that the next 100 are going to be scrap as well? Well, you raise a very good point, Paul, because adding automation can also automate scrap if the machine's not capable. So with Mazat we have a very accurate machine, able to turn very and hold very fine tolerances. But also it includes an automatic tool eye. So we can measure tools in cycle, we can update tool offsets, we can apply wear compensation, and we can also index spare tools according to the wear on the tools. Now, let's say I was sold on the product and the concept. My next question would be about the programming. 
I'm going to bring Reese in here because I know he's from RoboJob and he's going to talk to us about that. So I'll come back to you in a minute. Reese. Good afternoon, or good afternoon, Reese. Could you talk us through the program owner of this machine and how it works and how easy it is to use? Yeah, sure, no problem. Let's have a look. So it has to be very simple because otherwise you won't use it for small batches. You will say, I'll do it by hand. So that's why it has to be very easy to program. Basically, all you need to do is put in the measurements of the product. So the red product is um, the raw material. The green product is the finished one. So what you basically need is the height of the product and the diameters uh, of the outside. Part. Important to mention, this is actually a screenshot of inside the machine. Yeah, it, this is basically the chuck here, your jaws, and this is the, the work piece. So you can say, put in the piece uh, in the main chuck or in the, in the sub chuck, and uh, yeah, you can program everything on, uh, on this screen. Now, how long is it going to take me as a user to firstly learn this type of control uh, and secondly actually change from part to part? Good question. With the installation, we also do a training course. It usually takes about two to three hours to get every operating, operator working with the system. And if you want to program a new part, it takes about five to six minutes for a very new program. So versatility is a big factor in machine shops. This, this helps when you're looking to change from component to component quite quickly. Yeah, you need to be very flexible. It's really necessary on the small to medium sized batches. You can change swiftly. OK, brilliant, Reese. I'm going to come back to Mark now. So just to summarize then, Mark, this, this for you guys here at Mazak, this is an exciting venture into automation for this type of machine. Yeah, it's very exciting for us. And the fact that this is being supplied through Hydrofeed is also very, very exciting for us. Hydrofeed, I've supplied nearly 7,000 bar feeds into the UK market of expertise into material handling. So their sole agency and distributor for RoboJob is very important for the market. And just on a final part, if I wanted to move this to another machine, does it, does it offer me that as well? Yes, this is very much plug and play technology. So the requirement for the machine would be to have an automatic front door and a robot interface. Um, but it could be moved to another machine with a minimal setup time. It could also be laid on a plate and, and fixed so it could easily be moved between machines. So when I buy a machine or if I bought a machine from Mazak, as long as I've got that interface and the automatic door, I can come back to you in six months and say, auto hydro feed, I need one of these automation robo jobs. Yes, that is the case, but also as again, you could um, add an, uh, um, a robot interface to an existing machine and an automatic door as well. So it could both be fully retrofitted in the field. Automation and flexibility. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.